Hey nerds, today I'm going to be showing you how you can plug any Unix workstation or server or any of that or similar computers into another computer using serial and then administer it or do whatever you need to. So right here we've got an HP ZX6000. This was an old Itanium workstation one of like the two HP Itanium workstations made that was an HP design and not some Intel reference platform design. So this system is all set up and working and everything but if you're going to plug it in the normal way there's one thing you'll notice and that is you'll look on the back to where the video connector is and there's just a dummied out management card and if we go all the way down to the card cage there's nothing. There's no video card in it, despite this computer being a workstation. Well, in this case, there's a reason for that, and that's because this GPU that was in here was fried. Bad caps. It was just plain garbage. Look at these nasty, nasty caps. And even the sticker fell off the fan because this R300 GPU and a titanium put out so much heat that the GPU cooked itself. So... That means this system has no video hardware for the time being. But there's another way we're going to hook this thing up. And that is with serial. So the first thing we need is a null modem cable. Now this is a 9-pin serial cable. There's also other versions depending on your serial connector. I'll go into that in a second. But this is a null modem cable. And it goes into, on here, the port labeled console also serial A. So this is plugged in here. Now on a bunch of these systems it's not labeled. For example on this SGI Octane it's labeled just one and that's your console port. It's usually going to be just whatever ports labeled one and let's take a look at another system. Um, here's the back of an IBM same deal it's going to be the port labeled one so you're going to plug it into that port and then you'll get the console so port one here and usually it's the same with other systems like this old hp also port one so that's what you're going to do is you're going to plug it into port one usually if there's multiple serial ports now the connector will vary sometimes it'll be an eight pin connector that's round like on these old Macs but these Macs didn't use it for a serial console sometimes it'll be 25 pins like on older Suns and Sun also did use the round connector as well as as well as SGI. And then newer stuff, we're talking mid 2000s and newer, they switched to using a Cisco style cable. So it's RJ45 and it's serial, this, just like you would use on a Cisco router. But usually on those systems, they've also set the serial speeds higher. And I'll go into that when I actually show off how to connect them. So first thing you're gonna need to do is obviously plug your null modem cable into your system port one usually and then if you have a laptop that's older or a business grade laptop it'll already have a serial port on you can just plug that thing in problem is is modern laptops don't have serial ports you'll look around the side no serial port no serial ports none they don't have serial ports on them they do have USB ports, and then this is where we get into how to actually do it. You're going to need a USB serial adapter. So right here I've got these USB to serial adapters. Here's a CH340. This is the only one where it's actually labeled on the adapter what chipset it is. But most of these you're not going to see what chipset it is. Like this one, just a generic serial adapter model um, something GUC 232A here's a pluggable one and it actually says on here 
to download the drivers at our website. And then you have the staples adapter. This one is nice because it actually has activity LEDs, but yeah, you're just stuck with a little model number. Like, you don't even really get that much of a model number anyway. So let's show you how to find drivers for this thing. So let's plug in one of these. Um, I'm going to plug this one in. Now, you, you'll definitely want to Google for drivers for some of these because if you use Windows Update, some of these serial companies, I know PL2303 chipset cards are like this, they'll block out the car they'll block out the USB to serial adapter if it's fake which usually won't affect anything normally but if you're using a non-certified model this can be an issue so let's plug in the staples one for good measure we're going to plug it in and it's going to say device was not successfully installed now you've got two options here you can either go to change setting choose to install driver software from Windows Update but you might run into the fake issue so what we're gonna do is we're going to open up um, device manager so DV ice manager yep and unknown device so we're gonna go to details and we're going to copy this and now we're gonna go into Firefox and we're gonna paste this in search so right now we're already getting the drivers. And so we're going to download the drivers from the website. In this case we got Belkin site. But usually if you Google the VID you're going to get exactly what driver it's for. And then you're going to download it and you're going to open it up. So what you're going to do is you're going to go extract it you're going to install the driver sometimes you have to point it in device manager but here and with a lot of these cards you just get nice setup wizards now this is a Belkin card even though it's Staples branded but now it's just doing the whole driver installation and now we're going to go back to device manager and it says unknown device so um what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a second no we'll start later usually what you just gotta do is unplug and plug it back in and windows will go to installing device driver software finally installing it now notice what that says com3 as you can see, if you didn't see it there, COM3. This is very, very critical. So we're going to open up PuTTY. I'll put a link in the description. We're going to go to Serial, and it's going to ask us, like, speed and all. Now if we go down here, this is where we can set the BOD, parity, flow, control. Now, the reason I'm saying this is because usually it's going to be the default, 9600, 8N1, that's like the standard. But with newer devices, like newer servers, they've tried increasing the speed to like 19200 or 38400. So it'll all depend on like what system it is. If you see garbage, change the speed. And if you want to know the exact speed, look up the manual, especially if you're getting garbage. So let's click open and as we can see we have to change the serial port so if you get that message change it to com3 which is the one I showed you earlier it'll be it could be com6 it could be com7 it could be com8 but it's going to be com something and you're going to press the enter key I like to press the enter key for good measure just to see if anything comes up but if I press the enter key you can see the lights come on now I like to press the enter key because on some of these systems like IBM's you're going to see something but on this one we're not going to see anything even if we plug in the cable so we're going to plug the cable in 
And if we hit enter, like I said, we're going to get nothing. We're just going to get a light blinking. And that's because the cable's not really, there's no management process or anything, even though the cable's plugged in. So now we're going to turn the system on. But I know on these IBMs, for example, there's management processors on these systems. So if you press enter, you're going to get something. Same with like Cisco switches and all that fun stuff. So we're going to push the on switch on this beat to crap HP. And we're going to get the LED dance. That's the light above blinking to show that the system's booting. And what we're getting on here are basically post messages as it does the whole blinky dance on the front. Now on some of these systems, if you plug in serial, you'll get diagnostic messages funneled right to the serial line. I know Suns do that, and some SGIs do that as well. So we're getting right here the posting. It's doing the EFI boot, and it's doing its whole thing. So as it sends messages, you're going to see lights blink if your card has them, or well, adapter has them. But if you're using an adapter that doesn't have lights, you won't see that, though that is nice to have just so you know your connection's working. So like right now, so right now you can do the whole thing to install your OS, boot the OS, and all that. And it's communicating through the serial line because there's no video hardware in these systems. At least this one that I took the video hardware out of. But there's no video hardware in it. And that's how it tells you what the system's doing is through this serial cable. So, that's how you do it on Windows. Now, on the other hand, if you're using Linux instead of Windows, setting up serial adapters is so much easier because the first thing you need to do is plug it in, and most of the time Linux is going to recognize it because Linux has drivers for a lot of these USB to serial adapters. It, it just has the drivers. so. Let's do D message, D M E S G, and as we can see, it's found the serial adapter, and it's now going to be T T Y U S B zero, which is usually what it is. So now what we're going to do is install Putty. So sudo apt install. We're going to install Putty. And let's load PuTTY. So I like to use PuTTY as my terminal. Some people use like Minicom, but I always found that to be a pain in the ass. This on the other hand, you can just um, give it the serial settings. So TTY USB 0. Same way you would on Windows. Let's open it up and let's push enter. And yeah. We're going to log in. And now we're in HPUX. So now we can do what we want to do. So um, you want to run commands on the system, you can easily do that. You can do any of that on here. And it's much easier than on Windows because Linux, a lot of these USB to serial adapters will just work out of the box. You don't have to worry about installing any of these weird drivers like on Windows or drivers blocking stuff. Because as you can see here, staples, USB adapter, it loads the driver up. It does all that stuff for you. You don't have to go download other stuff.
it just works. And now let's walk out. And there we go. It just works on Linux, people. So one more thing before I finish this video up, let's talk about how this works on workstations. So this is a workstation. As we can see, it has video hardware on this one, unlike this one where I pulled the video card out because it was dead and wasting power. So right here we've got the video card, and it's just VGA. Some of these it might be something weird like BNC, but on here it's just good old VGA. But we're going to be booting it through serial. Now, on this machine, if you have a keyboard and mouse plugged in, it's not going to serial boot because it'll see the keyboard and mouse and it'll assume there's a display connected. So the trick here is to disconnect the keyboard and mouse from the system. You're going to want to disconnect them and then you'll plug the serial cable in and you'll shoot it up to your laptop. Now actually this system has a front LCD panel so you can see what the boot process is. So I'm going to move the laptop onto this other computer and show you what it's doing. Alright, so the HP's below and this laptop's up. So let's turn the HP on and see what we see. Stage one, it's doing the self-tests. Right now it's set to the quick self-tests. And now it says test graph in three and it PCI slot, but it's going to fail to initialize the keyboard console because there is nothing there. Then it says console is serial one. And just like that, it's booting. Now, it, it just kicked me back to the firmware with the warning, no boot device. But, we can do the usual and we can still boot it, but it would say that the console was serial, as you could see there. So, we're going to go to SEA. And yeah, we can do the usual booting from here. As we can see, it says warning, no boot device. And let's pull the disk out. But as we can see, if I didn't get that error message, it would say console is on serial one. In fact, Let's do it now. Reset. Resetting. Boot process again. Test graph in three. Keyboard console. Throws up an error. And it's serial one. Console is serial one and it just shot up the info about the system through this serial terminal and if we cancel it we don't get the no boot device message so console serial one i decided to use this system because it's a great demonstration of how a lot of these workstation systems will search for a keyboard and if they don't see a keyboard connected they will just go to serial as a fallback. But on some of these systems, you'll have to manually switch it over. On IBMs, you have to push a number to select the console. And the biggest one is on some older HPs, for example, they don't have serial console on the workstations. So you'll have to do that yourself. But as we can see here, yeah, it worked over serial. So yeah, there you have it. There's how to connect these devices. And that's all that needs to be said. Thanks for watching, gamers, and subscribe for more.